As one uh, who has been dealing with PTSD for over 25 years, unless it's about the dogs, I would not be sitting here talking to you. I wouldn't be here. I still won't go certain places. I still won't do certain things. I still have problems, and she can attest to it, that she drive her nuts every day. The inmates will get to introduce themselves to, to us and the clients. Uh, a couple of them will have to get up and give little speeches because we think that part of regaining your confidence or ability to interact positively in the outside world is to be able to get up and talk to somebody. Look. Okay, this is uh, one of the things that we do that's very important to the program. So, uh, and this is the biggest one of these bumps that we've had here at Lake, and we've done onesies before, but never have you done five. So the goal today is to find five dogs for five of our clients. And then each of our clients have to get up and introduce themselves, uh, which is the first thing in their sweat equity that they're putting into getting the dog. My name's Adam. Wow, am I uncomfortable. Um, I did, uh, was in the United States Army, I did weapons demo. Uh, I did shot twice, blown up twice in three minutes. I had four purple hearts and a bronze star. I broke my back in four places, dislocated my spinal column. Um, beyond all that, uh, I didn't realize how uncomfortable I was with people or my surroundings. I started my career as a combat medic in the Army. After 24 years of being a medic, you would think that a paramedic could recognize the signs of PTSD. We're very good at diagnosing other people, but we're horrible about diagnosing ourselves. I'm a student and I'm also a client. Two days after I graduated from high school, I was sitting in boot camp in the Navy. And it didn't take very long after that to find out where my father got his child mirroring skills from. The families go through a traumatic experience as well. I spent 14 years in the military. I did all the hard, cool stuff. I was airborne ranger, special forces. Uh, I went to combat a lot. I've got a wife of 20 years. I've got triplet five-year-old boys. I've got a life worth living, and I have a hard time living it. Ronnie. Oh, look at that pretty baby. 
Come here, Mason. Come here, Mason. Come here, Mason. Oh, I don't want to play. The good one in this one is there's no leash involved. Nobody's holding the leash, and that dog's staying right there with him. Yeah. Ex accepting looks, the dog seeking out affection. He's still checking out his surroundings and his handler, which he'll go to if he can. Yeah. Right there, he's back. Okay. If I can't go to her, I'll take you. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite spots, bud. Oh. He's leaning into him. Oh, wagging the tail. He, he's, he's totally into accepting your affection right now with that. Which is the same thing, except he isn't submitting. When you roll on your back, they're submitting at the same time. That's like the, the big piece of candy getting your butt scratched and leaning in and go, oh my god, I'm just in heaven. And he's totally escaped the rest of the world. And he's totally secure with you. You guys that allowed this operation to take place in the prison system, oh man, thank you. And I hope you, you, you want to expand it because you're helping guys like us. Whether you know it or not, you're reforming people. I've, I've, I've done some work in prisons and stuff like that, and the worst thing that you can do in a, in a, is sit around and do nothing. And uh, these people are, man, they're taking their personal time where they could be laying in their rack or doing whatever and making a difference. I think it's, I think it's incredible. And uh, I, I'm proud of you guys, and thank you. Thank you guys for wanting to get involved. Thank you.